serves the dependence of United States military personnel overseas. The area is controlled and inhabited by Americans and Japanese. The school was formerly a kamikaze training school during World War II. Buildings are old and in constant need of repair. On the outside, Johnson High School is anything but a beautiful school. Like many schools, Johnson suffers from scarce financial resources and few curricular materials. But the program inside is what counts. The students, parents, and faculty at Johnson are proud of their school. At one time, Johnson High School mirrored the typical American high school. One teacher was assigned to five classes, and each class was made up of 30 students. The school day was six hours in length. Most students had one study hall and five courses. Today, Johnson High School is one of the most forward-looking schools in the Far East, a beacon light school for other schools in the United States. Hey, people. We have just received a letter from a superintendent of schools in the United States concerning our program. Perhaps you may be interested in it. From reading recent journals and other educational publications, we became aware of education innovation in your high school. It would be most helpful if you would furnish us information on plant layout, curriculum, equipment, and material requirements, and your specific scheduling system. What do you think we should tell you? Before beginning its flexible scheduling program, the entire staff spent a year planning. The support and enthusiasm of the faculty was used to help explain, and even in some cases, sell the program to the public. After the program began, it became the subject of discussion throughout the base, and the community responded with strong support. They added walls. Here they made small group spaces. Even added portable walls to create teacher offices. Here they created a large group lecture room. This was formerly two large traditional classrooms, but it's now used for large numbers of students and materials are presented by a member of the teaching team. Hi, folks. I just finished my Gaffer lecture in chemistry today. I'm glad to have that over with. Or if I had to give that lecture again today, I wouldn't know what to do with it. But one thing I like about large group lectures, I don't have to keep repeating myself over and over. That's a good point. But you know, I think the real success of this program is the small group. You can come in there and the kids carry most of the load. Uh, English today, they came in, they did almost all the talking, I listened, and they covered the topic beautifully. With the reorganization of the program, the teacher's job has changed considerably. No longer do teachers spend most of their time lecturing to students. The biology laboratory arrangement illustrates how a teacher can provide necessary directions for more than one activity at one time. Now, you have about three groups here. Some of you are going to be studying the files and developing. Others of you are going to be in a section with the earthworm, and some of you are just discussing vocabulary. But on every one of them, what you're concerned is developing. Developing from the simple to the complex. 
And no matter what you're doing, I want you to keep this in mind. This is the most important thing that we're considering. Uh, you people that are working with the file, you can meet over here with some chairs. Uh, I think some of you in the lab section one have some dissection work just started, and the others, you just draw your chairs on in here, and Judy will help you out with these ball camera very Okay? Take care. Oh, my talk is on. Let's go, son. I see Dick separating his two rats here. Yeah. Uh, we're starting to eat each other last night. Do we have any pregnant ones right now? That's what we're down. What you got here? The mouse is what you got here. Is this the one you've been working on the maze with? Yes, sir. Let's see how it works. If students are to have individualized educational opportunities, the role of the teacher must be flexible. Okay, I see you have the spleen and exposure. Well, there's an anesthesiologist holding a mask. One of the most important parts of the Johnson program is the opportunity for self-responsibility to the point where they can make the kinds of decisions that are required of those who already have the necessary self-discipline. Periodically, each student's performance is reviewed to determine if which students qualify for independent study and which students need a greater degree of guidance. Some people have thought the Johnson plan was designed for the college-bound student. In fact, however, the new plan has been particularly helpful to those students who have had difficulty succeeding in the past. Greater individual attention accounts for some of the improvements in student performances. The guided study program was established for those who couldn't handle independent study. Ninety percent of the student body now has some independent study time. The independent study pass has become the key to the success of the program. Francis, have a seat. Francis, I think we can both agree that you have learned to use your own schedule time wisely. And now it's time for you to demonstrate this by using your independent study pass to gain entrance to the resource centers. This study pass you will give to the director every time you walk into the resource center and be sure when you leave to pick it up. Take real good care of it. With a pass, a student may go between modules to several independent study areas and specialized resource centers. How a student uses his responsibility is evaluated by his grades, his class participation, his behavior, and by the observations of the school faculty and the school paraprofessionals. There are a number of different areas in which the student may choose to study. For example, this is the Math Science Resource Center. It's a departmental study area with offices of the math and science teachers located in the room next to the center, giving students access to teachers when the students need help. This is the case in all resource centers throughout the school. In the largest resource centers, there is always a director and or other paraprofessional staff available. Some of the paraprofessional, non-certified personnel are volunteers, while others are paid by funds raised through community support projects. The paraprofessionals help locate material for teachers and students because at Johnson, they believe, resources should wear out from overuse, not from old age. In the resource centers, materials are related to the specific subject being studied. In this particular resource center, a performance curriculum has been established for the students so they can progress at their own pace. Each student is issued an individual study package and is tested on given materials whenever the student indicates he is ready. This is reference material, which you have to read. A student's independent pass opens up many other areas where he can study. The library, the language laboratory, and the open laboratory areas, such as the art room and the biology center. With the increased level of self-responsibility by the students and the specially modified facilities, it's possible to use the various resource facilities for the minimum of teacher supervision. In addition, student assistants and community personnel often volunteer to hold special classes. For example, this volunteer teaches the cultural history of the Far East and a course on the Chinese language. Ni hao ma. Ni hao ma. Ni gao ma. Ni gao ma. Ni hao ma. Ni hao ma. These students are learning Chinese on a non-credit, non-grade basis. 
They are taking the course because they have the interest, not because they expect to receive grades when the special sessions are finished. Call, which means call, and haul, which means good. So all together now. Call, call, haul, haul, call, call, haul, haul, ta, call, ma, ta, call, ma, ta, haul, ma, ta, haul, ma, ni, call, ma, ni, call, ma, ni, haul, ma. Betsy, can you tell us a little more about that field trip you took to the Spanish embassy last week? Continuous modification and feedback is necessary to keep the program moving forward. Well, first of all, it's so far away, it was easily an all-day trip. It's quite difficult to tie them in. But uh, there are so many things in Japan that we like to see about the culture, about the geography, about the uh, different uh, artistic culture. And we've decided that in our creative photography course that we're going to start next year, that we want to make uh, eight millimeter film books. So instead of going bringing the kids out to all these places, we can bring some of these film books and show them to the kids. You can bring in people, because I found, I think, all of us really, Joe Payne, who teaches our Chinese history course, and uh, uh, people like this are available throughout. I think if we spend some time checking with the universities in the area, we can find people who will come and work for our students and uh, talk to them or help them in some areas. Uh, there's a lot of resources available, I think, that are just sought out. Uh, there has to be some type of central organization, and this is something we should do probably, as, uh, as you mentioned, and maybe make up a list when the teachers do. The faculty is making a considered effort to help the student who has had difficult achieving in the past feel and know that he's important. They have converted a former vocational arts room into a wall-to-wall -wall carpeted, draped, attractive learning space. The furnishings for this room were obtained by having the students and the parents sponsor a number of fundraising activities. This type of cooperation has helped to encourage students and parents to take an active role in the educational program rather than fighting against the system. They are an active part of it and know what they can do to help resolve problems as the problems emerge. When I first came to Johnson, I thought, well, I was new here, and I thought they were pulling something on me, you know, because I first got here, and they said, flexible scheduling, you're going to have 21 mods a day, and you don't have to go to class. So my parents didn't like the idea at all. So once I got into it, I was, I was supposed to transfer back I, this May, in the middle of my senior year. So I was kind of worried about it, because now I don't think I can go back to a regular high school, because I couldn't sit in a room for six, you know, Six mods or, you know, I can't even, whatever you're calling, I can't even yeah. remember anymore. Yeah, six periods a day. I, I couldn't stand it. And this scheduling um, teaches you a lot more responsibility because you have a lot of free time and you can um, do something with your free time that's constructive or you can just goof around, which the other type of scheduling didn't allow you to do. And also with this scheduling, you can take a lot more courses because there's a lot more time in the day. And not all the courses meet every single day, so you have a lot more room. And this, this type of setup will give you more of a chance to have an, an easier way to go when you get into college. Because instead of spending, spending your freshman year getting into the, the swing of things is the way the college set scheduling goes, you have that all taken care of when you're at Johnson because you've gone on flex, flexible scheduling. So you, you don't have to spend that first year suffering through getting used to using your own time. You can go on your own more or less. But when you're a freshman going to Johnson, uh, you have to adjust uh, mm -hmm. to going to school on the modular schedule. Don't you think it's easier to adjust that freshman year in high school than your freshman year in college? And because your courses aren't going to be half as hard, you know, and your teachers are going to try to help you. And uh, a large college, since they're so crowded in those colleges, yeah. you're just a number. You're not even a name anymore. And the modular schedule, you still do have, um, when you're a freshman, they still do tell you a lot the courses you're going to take and when you're going to take them. And as you graduate, you know, move up to a few senior year, you have more choice in your subjects. When the system first came in last year, um, not all kids were making very good grades along the way from their time. And this year, kids that were making bad grades last year are really making good grades this year because they're learning how to use their time properly.
think also uh, with uh, flexible scheduling, you can uh, plan your own time and spend more time on the subjects that you need more time on. Today, Johnson High School has 21 modules. Each module, 20 minutes in length, classes range in time from 40 minutes to 2 hours, depending upon the nature of the learning activities selected for the class. Many different size groups are established, some having as few as six students, while others have nearly 100 students. As in all schools, the teachers are at the heart of the instructional program. At Johnson, good utilization of the teacher's time and competency is at a premium. Using team teaching and flexible scheduling as the catalyst for change, a new look at educational alternatives has emerged from the Orient. Now that the program is progressing, many requests for information about the new approach are received from the United States. Well, have we forgotten anything? What else should we tell them? I think you might just add that though the job is never finished, we feel for what we want to offer our students, it's certainly worth the effort. You might also tell them that when this program started to take shape, our facilities changed quite a bit. I don't think a person who was here uh, three years ago would even recognize this place. Limited facilities, unlimited future. Johnson High School, Tokyo, Japan. Thank you.